Solutions Aquarium, sponsored by Aquarium Cabinet Solutions and Fit Filtration in association with My Aquarium Box. How's it going guys and welcome to another update on the 420 gallon reef, or as we fondly know her, as the wife. Now in today's update we're going to be doing some maintenance. It's maintenance day so I thought I'd bring you all along for the ride. Today we're going to be doing all of the different things that I do to make sure that this tank is in tip top condition. We're going to be changing all the filters, we're going to be giving everything a good clean and we're also going to be performing a water change. Now if you follow the progression of this system you'll know that I originally set up this tank to not require water changes and that still is holding sound. I'm not doing a water change today to replenish any elements or to remove any nutrients, I'm simply doing it to give the gravel a good clean. Now, I did have a tiger goby in this system which was doing that for me. He was making sure that this gravel was clean all the time and he did an absolutely brilliant job. The gravel was white all the time. Every time that you've seen my videos and you've seen this beautiful white gravel, I haven't done anything to that before the video, the tiger goby kept on top of that. Now a few days ago he decided he wanted to move out so he jumped out the top of the tank. This tank has got glass sliders all the way across and it's completely sealed. Now one night I was feeding the fish quite late at night, about 9 o'clock at night, about an hour before the lights go out and once I'd fed them I got distracted and I forgot to close the lid. Now I left a gap of this much and that's it, this much. Bear in mind this is a seven foot tank, that little guy managed to find this gap and jump out of it and I came down the following morning and found him right here. So I was absolutely gutted about that. I've not been able to replace him with anything that's anywhere near his size or just the graft that he's been able to put in. I have managed to pick up a chalk goby, which is a lot smaller than the tiger goby. The shops around here at the moment don't really have any large gobies in, so um, the chalk goby's in here, but he's, he's trying, but he's got a big graft in front of him. So I'm going to help him out a bit and do a big gravel clean on this system. So the things that I'm going to be using on this system is I'm going to be using my gravel cleaner. This is the Fluval FX gravel cleaner. I'm really impressed with this. Uh, Fluval sent me this a few weeks ago um, and I'm really impressed with it so much so that I've decided to keep it and run it on my system. So we're going to be using this to do my gravel clean. We're going to be using the Aquaforest Probiotic Reef Salt in my system. Now this salt supposedly can help reduce nitrates and phosphates. It does actually say on the label if you're running ozone in your system then it won't work that way and I do run ozone so I'm not really hoping for anything big but we'll see how it goes. And um, So this is the salt that we're going to be using and to clean my glass I'm going to be using my flipper. This is the flipper max because I've got quite a big tank. So these are all the little bits of equipment that I'm going to be using and the one last thing that everybody should have is a scruffy towel. Just a towel so that you can dry up behind you in case you have any spills or anything like that and you're, you're good to go. So before we do anything in the tank what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going outside and mixing the salt. Now I always mix my salt on the day that I'm going to be doing maintenance. The reason why I do that is because I want the, the salt as fresh as possible. I don't want it being contaminated by anything that's you know, out in the shed. I don't want it mixing for too long because I don't know if the, the tub that it's in is potentially leaching anything to the water or anything like that. It's probably not but I'd rather mix it on the same day. The great thing about the Aquaforest Reef Salt is it mixes really really fast. Sometimes you can have it mixed within 15 minutes and ready to use so you know it's a really really good salt so that's what we're going to be using today. So let's go outside and let's get the salt mixed. So this is my water change shed and this is where I do all of my water preparation for my aquarium. The barrel on the top here is where I hold all of my RODI water. I've always got 200 litres of RODI water on hand at any one occasion. And this barrel down here is where I mix my salt water. So when I'm ready to mix, all I do is I've got a little uh, nozzle just here. I turn that 
and this fills up with our ODI water. I then mix my salt in there and pump it all into my tank. Once it's empty, I give it a good clean and I leave it empty until the next change. So now what we're gonna do is we've already got our ODI water in here and it's already heated. We've, I've had this running all day, heating up, ready for the salt. So all I need to do now is just add the salt. So I take the lid off and the great thing is with this Aquaforest salt is it comes with this little measuring beaker and just here it has a fill line. So on this fill line, it says 10 liters of RO water. So if you put this amount of salt into 10 liters of RO water, it will mix your salinity absolutely bob on. So this is 200 liters of water. So we're gonna need 20 of these. Also inside this pump, I've got a big 10,000 litre per hour return pump, which is mixing the water inside the barrel. So what we'll do, we'll come back in 15 minutes and we'll check to see if the water's all nice and clear and ready to go in my main display. So now that we've got the water mixing ready for the water change, first of all, we've got to do all of the little jobs to make sure that this tank is ready for the new water to go in. Now, a bit of equipment that I forgot to mention at the start of the video is this. This is a refractometer, and this is something every reef owner should have. Whether you mix your own water or you buy water from the LFS, whatever, you should have one of these in your box of tricks because, you know, these are invaluable, honestly. So we're going to be using this later on to make sure that the water that we've mixed up is at the right salinity. Another good thing to have is an old bucket, whether it's a salt bucket or any type of container. This is going to be good for rinsing out. If you use sponges, say for example, if you use a canister filter on your system, you know, you can put some of your tank water into this bucket, rinse out all of your sponges and everything, get all of the debris and all of the waste out of the sponges, give them a good rinse and then you can put them back into your canister filter. I run um, a green sponge, which is like a, a medium core sponge, which I don't replace every single water change or every single maintenance day. What I do is I just give it a bit of a clean and then I put it back in the system. All of the filter floss I throw away and put new filter floss in. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is get all of the glass on the inside nice and clean. Get any algae that's built up along the bottom off with the scraper and just give the glass, you know, just a quick buff over to loosen off any de debris that's stuck to the glass so that when we do a water change, we'll be taking all of that out of the tank. Right, so now all the glass is clean and all of the algae's been removed and scraped off the glass, what we're gonna do now is now we're gonna do the gravel clean. We're gonna do literally all of the gravel that is on show. We're gonna get into as many nooks and crannies that we can get into and make sure that it's all lovely and clean and any bits of waste or debris or anything like that is removed from the system.
So now that we've done our gravel clean on the system and we've taken out all of the water that we want to take out, now we're just going to take our trusty little waste bucket and start to throw away all of the things that we're going to be replacing with new. So what we're going to do on this system is I'm just going to take the skimmer cup out for a second so because all my mechanical filtration is behind the skimmer cup. I'm going to get my uh, coarse green sponge out of the back, this one, and I'm going to rinse it because I'm going to actually use this again. Uh, so I'm just going to take the little bucket and give the sponge a good rinse in some tank water. Now that's all nice and clean, um, what I'm going to do is just use this bucket now to just throw everything away. So first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty out the skimmer cup. This absolutely stinks. I'm just going to dump all of this in the bucket, get rid of that. I'm not actually going to clean the skimmer cup itself, I'm going to leave that as it is because it's not massively dirty so I'm just going to leave that um, as it is for now. I'm then going to get all of the filter floss, all of this filter floss out of the mechanical filtration area and that's just going to go in the bin. I'm going to get new filter floss and put it in its place. So for filter floss what I use is I just use a polyester pillow. Um, I know some people out there think it's a good idea, some people think it's a bad idea, whatever your opinions are on using polyester pillows, you know, it's completely up to you, but me, I do use polyester pillows because they last a very long time. Where I live, I can buy two of these pillows for £3 and these will last me probably six months to a year, so uh, it's definitely worth it for me. Now again, you know, it's up to you whether you want to use them or not. Uh, I know a lot of people do and don't like the idea of it, but it's worked for me for way over a year, way, way over a year now, so, you know, it just is what it is. All I do is just rip some out of the pillow, I just damp it a bit so it's a bit more, you know, easy to, uh, to use, and then I just put it in the uh, mechanical filtration area in the back of my sump. Once all the filter floss is in, then I take my green sponge and I place this on top of the filter floss. The reason why I do this is because this will catch any large particles first. Say for example a, a large bit of mysis goes straight over the overflow before the fish have had a chance to eat it. This will catch it and it will make it a lot easier for me to take it out. Plus it will stop the filter floss clogging as fast. Once the mechanical filtration area has all been changed over and put back together, I replace the skimmer cup on the skimmer. And that is that. Normally what I'd also do is I'd replace the carbon which is in my carbon reactor, but I've only just changed the carbon in the carbon reactor, so I don't need to do that today. Uh, everything else is all clean, everything else has been changed over, the water has been more or less completely drained out of the sump um, and we're all good to go. So all we need to do now is just dry up around us and refill the tank. So once everything's done and everything's all clean, everything's been replaced, all I do then is see this green hose here, that green hose runs all the way back to the shed where we started mixing the water. That green water butt that had all of the salt water mixing in it now is pumping to this tank. So it runs right across this green pipe and then starts coming into the tank. So all I've got to do now is just wait and the tank will fill back up to the level where I want it. Uh, I've taken 200 litres out and this will put 200 litres back in. So, you know, it should fill right back to the level, my running level of my tank. So it is as simple as that. So once this tank's all filled up, we'll check it out and see how the corals have reacted to a water change. So guys, there you go. That's the water change all done. The substrate is back to a beautiful, vibrant white. I've done a bit of a shuffle round with some of the corals and things because um, some of the corals were obscure in the other ones and I didn't like it. So what I have done, is I've repositioned the red Montipora. 
This is now on the outside edge of my overhang. So when this all starts to grow, it'll grow out this way, it'll grow out that way, and it'll just take all of this area where Jeff is at the moment. It'll, you know, it'll have a nice little um, overhang with the Montipora. It'll start to spiral up and it'll look absolutely stunning. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll know that I'm currently on the hunt for various different colours of plating Montipora because I'm going to be putting them all the way around this overhang. Just various different colours like the purples and greens, etc. All around that overhang so that when they grow, it's just going to look brilliant. What I've also done is the corals that was here, like this one for example, were sort of like here, and it was obscuring the view of my strawberry shortcake. Now the strawberry shortcake is my favorite coral, so obviously I didn't want the view of that being obscured. So what I've done is I've moved this one over. Now this one is sort of like on an angle here where once it starts to grow, it's just gonna take all of this area, like where you can sort of like see the rest now, it'll just take all of this area as it starts to branch up and grow over the years and it'll look really, really good. Same for this one, you know, it'll just start to branch up and grow and look really, really good. Everything, you know, once it all starts to grow in, will really, really change the dynamic of this tank. Now what I'm going to be doing first of all is I'm going to be concentrating on this rock structure. This is going to be the rock structure that I'm going to finish first. So I'm going to be buying all of my corals specifically for this structure. Once this structure is finished, then I'll move over to the larger one. So guys, I've got a little question for you. If you want to get a little bit involved in this tank, let me know in the comment section below what corals do you think I should put on this structure. Now this structure is gonna be, you know, something like 90% SPS, if not 100% SPS. So give me your little ideas, what you think I should put on here. And also, what do you think I should put over this side? What, what other corals do you think I should put on? If you can see the flow pattern, the flow pattern is currently one way. So we're going across the top and then through the bottom, and then we have a little bit of a turbulent section in the middle. And then we've got the other side of the rock over here. We have got some more, you know, uh, some SPS. You notice how I just keep calling them SPS at the moment because um, I'm not fully, you know, aware of all of the names of the corals just yet. I'm still learning quite a lot when it comes to uh, the SPS corals. Uh, I have got a mentor at the moment, Mark Hebb. He's helping me out a lot with the SPS corals. He's teaching me, you know, all sorts of different things. So, you know, things are going to come on leaps and bounds with him helping me out. Uh, just under there, you can see one of my wrasse. We've got uh, quite a few new fish, so we'll be talking about them in next week's update. But yeah, if you've got any ideas of what corals you want to see in this tank, if I agree with you, then we'll look at getting them in. Right guys, so that's everything all done dusted. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. But for now, I will catch you all later.